Hey guys, in this video, we'll be taking a look at a few chart analyses to get you prepared for the week ahead. I hope you had a great weekend, and as you can see, there's a go chart on my screen, and I'm going to try as much as possible to go as fast as I can with these, you know, few charts we'll be taking a look at today. And starting with the go charts, just before we get started, if you're not subscribed to our channel, please subscribe, like, and leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you're interested in learning trade first like a professional, check out our complete forex trading course on Udemy. I have the link also attached in the description below. So guys, last week we talked about how, you know, we expected some bullish move on gold and it seemed to play out exactly as we anticipated, right? So this is a four hours chart on gold. I'm not going to be starting from the daily chart because we already know what happened on the daily chart, which, you know, gives us rise to this uh, bullish trend. Okay, so we're going to be focusing on what's happening in real time. So over here, for us to spot out how we're going to take advantage of the market when, you know, the market opens within a few hours or in a few hours, depending on, you know, where you are um, around the world. So we had this massive bullish move. I think I banged 500 pips from this. I got in early around the price levels. Yeah, around 500 pips. I got out early as well before the reversal. So we seem to have reversed and retested this area of value. So we have a very good area of um, support here. So it was a resistance before. After we had this massive breakout with a uh, solid bullish candle, it has turned to a support. And we seem to have nagged that level a little bit, right? What are we going to be watching out for for us to go long? Because for a chart like this, you don't want to go short, right? I'm going to mark out this level first. So this level is my immediate price target for a long position so i'm going to talk about my other price targets as we you know move on with the video so right now to go long i'm going to wait for more consolidation more consolidation in form of a bullish flag and a bullish breakout before i go long so something like this this is what i'll be watching out for to go long so i'm going to go long at a break of this um, consolidation pattern so it could take a day it could take a few hours but I won't be doing this on the 4 hours time frame, so I'm going to go down to the 2 hours time frame. So I'm likely going to pick my entry on the 2 hours time frame or the 1 hour time frame as the case may be, right? But for the sake of this video, we're going to be focusing on the 2 hours time frame so we can clearly see the charts, right? So this is our consolidation from last week, right? Where we had the bounce as expected and we took our long, taking out these highs and now we seem to be consolidating again. Now, two things are likely going to happen when the market opens, right? So, we either get price pumping up, going higher, without even giving us an opportunity to go uh, to get into the trade, or we could see a price reversal for a proper retest before we go up, just like we had over here, right? But this is not guaranteed because the market can be un unpredictable sometimes, right? So, what I'm watching out for simply is waiting for a bit of a pullback it could be a retest or not but a consolidation with a bullish breakout to confirm a continuation of this bullish momentum that's what will be my signal to go long so my entry is going to be at the breakout stop loss is going to be below the consolidation that leads to the breakout right and um that could be either around these price levels or these price levels as the case may be so depending on when we get our breakout and the consolidation that leads to the breakout so remember this is how I trade simple price action. There's no need to complicate things. You see the market for what it is. You be, uh, get patient, and when the market show it, shows its hand, then that will be your moment to strike, right? So the reason why I'm uh, bullish on going long is because we already kind of had a retest. So this is not very valid, but it is a retest, right? So just one candle, weak down here, and we had lots of bulls coming in to you know bid the price higher. So this is already a good enough retest in my opinion. So that's what I'm like. I'm saying we may not get another one to give traders the opportunity to get into this trade. But it's good to be patient enough to see if we maybe get a small pullback, a good consolidation, and then bullish breakouts to go long. So this is what I'll be watching out for to go long on gold. Pretty straightforward, nothing complicated here. Some traders could also do this. You could draw a trend line like this, taking down these lows, but I think paying attention to these lows is kind of irrelevant right now because we are trading at new price levels. I'm going to talk about this more at a later date when I talk about price action compartmentalization. So that's something I came up with. I'm going to show you and teach you what it's all about. But for now, I'm not paying attention to these lows because we are currently trading around 
you know, in new price levels, which I believe other traders are, you know, keeping their eyes on. But if you're going to go short, yes, your short bearish case scenario, right? It's good to look at both sides of the coin, not just, you know, being bullish and, you know, getting in a trade when there seems to be an opportunity for a bearish um, momentum, right? But that doesn't mean I'll be going short. So I'm just doing this for the bear bros out there. So to go short, you're simply going to wait for price to retest consolidate on the trend line and give you a proper bearish breakout so this bearish breakout would have to take out this trend line and also take out this area of support so if that happens then you could go short i'm going to show you where i wouldn't be going short okay so you could go short on the next price level below the breakout on the trend line and you know taking at the support level and targets could be around this price level because this is our next immediate support level right so the reason why I won't be going short, right? Just listen and learn. Okay, learn. The reason I'll be going short is because price usually tends to take the path of least resistance, right? So price would always try its best to take the path of least resistance. What, what does that mean? It means it will look for price levels where it's easy to penetrate, it's easy to go through. That's what price does most of the time, especially after huge consolidations like this right so if you take a look at this bearish case scenario first of all price has this trend line to contend with that's one then it has the support level to break that's two after breaking the support level it has another one here to break after breaking this one it has another one here if you are going to mark out all the important area of values it has another one here so you can see there's just so many supports below this current resistance level or support level for price to you know turn around and say i'm going to go down so this will only happen if something catastrophic happens in the market or the market is just trying to be wicked, right? But if you take a look at the bullish case scenario, there's clearly, in fact, almost nothing keeping price from moving higher apart from this resistance level we have over here. So with all this being said, there's a good chance price would play around this price level and eventually go higher because this is the part of least resistance. I hope this makes sense. I know you probably haven't heard about this before. Take note of this, right? Whenever you are trading, after massive consolidations like this, when you see price making bullish moves or bearish moves, just ask yourself, which area, which price level is price likely going to head towards? In this case, I think price is likely going to head towards the upside. And what matters is when is price going to take this action? Is it going to happen immediately after the market op opens? Is it going to happen after a consolidation and a breakout? Or is it going to happen after a retest of this price that way again for going up? But you know for a fact that price is likely going to go up. And one thing you need to understand, nothing is guaranteed in the market. It's all speculation and probabilities. But if you are trading in line with the direction, with the most probability, then you are most likely going to end up in profit other than looking for a bearish trade here yeah, it doesn't just make any sense so for me even if we take out this um trend line we take out this uh resistance or support level i wouldn't be going short because we have a very close area of support here that would hold price so let's say for example you go short over here you set your stop loss over here for example then tp will be what approximately um what 200 pips and there's a good chance price may never even get to these price levels. So, but if you take a look at the upside, if you take a trade, maybe after the consolidation and breakout, yeah, you have almost 350 pips. Coupled with that price may just keep going higher because this is probably going to be a price discovery. So that's it briefly for gold. If you're looking to trade gold, this is how I'm going to approach the market. I'm going to be patient, wait for those consolidations, confirmations before I go long. And I won't be going short because the risk to reward ratio is not just there for me. When it comes to going short so moving on we'll be talking about crude oil so real quick crude oil is something we talked about last week and we had a very good symmetrical triangle with price creating series of lower highs and higher lows and we talked about the fact that there's a good chance price may go higher breaking at this resistance level or go lower because a symmetrical triangle shows a sign of indecision except we do get a breakout in that direction right so this resistance seemed to have held and we saw a price reversal to the downside. So I'm going to go down to the lower time frame. So let's try the 4 hours time frame to see what's happening down here, right? So this is where we want to focus on right now. So pay attention. We're going to focus on these price levels right now. I don't know if there are a lot of good traders in this channel or in our community. 
but I trade gold a lot. Um, uh, sorry, crude oil, excuse me. I trade crude oil a lot, and I think it's okay to share my charts on these just in case there are you know traders out there who trade crude oil because when you get it right, you make a banger, right? So going down to the lower time frame, so let's start from the four hours time frame. No, I'm just gonna make it at two hours, right? Because two hours is where I want to watch out for a trade entry. Excuse me. So I'm gonna do this. So yes, so on the two hours time frame, I'm just gonna show you or um you know make a description of what these levels are. So this level over here is the level we had our rejection from on the daily time frame I showed you a couple of minutes ago. And uh, this is an area of value where we had a good bounce, another bounce over here, and I see it seems we are heading towards that direction again. We're probably gonna break it. And this is the lower bound of the of the symmetrical triangle, right? So let's analyze what's happening over here. After our bounce, we had a breakout from this ascending channel. So a bearish breakout followed by now a bearish flag. So this bearish flag signifies a bearish continuation. This is simple chart pattern 101. If you are new to uh, Forex or if you've been in the game for quite some time, you know what bearish continuation patterns are, right? So this is a bearish continuation pattern which also gives rise to an ABC area to wave pattern. So A, B, C. So there's a good chance we go lower. Meanwhile, even if we go lower, there's a good chance we get stopped around these price levels before price bounces up. There's a good chance. So like I said earlier, it's all about probabilities. So right now, when the market opens, I'm going to go short. Okay, I'm speaking about myself. I'm going to go short because we seem to have had a good breakout from this, you know, um, bearish um, continuation pattern, which is a bearish flag right now. So I'm going to go short. My stop loss is going to be above these highs. Quite high, I know, but I use proper risk management. So guys, I'm speaking for myself. What I do in this channel, what I do on my weekly analysis may not necessarily work for you because we do not have the same trading style and we, don't, we do not have the same risk management principles, right? So I could go short here because it feels convenient for me because of my risk management, but you don't have to do that. I may also decide to set my stop loss as high at this price level, depending on how convinced I am in this trade. Another reason why I'm bearish is because gold seems to be bullish. So in essence, if you take a look at price history, whenever gold is seems to be bullish, crude oil tends to take a chill pee, right? It tends to go in the opposite direction. So that's the reason why I'm, you know, bearish on crude oil right now. Another reason I'm bearish is because we failed to take out this resistance level and the upper bound of the symmetrical triangle. And now we've broken down from this, uh, we've had a bearish breakout from this bearish flag. Now we have a bearish continuation pattern. So when the market opens, I may decide to set my stop loss as high as this price level because I don't give a damn, right? Because I trade with good and strict risk management. So when price gets to this area of support, if, okay, if price gets to this area of support, then I'm going to adjust my stop loss to entry so that I can run the trade risk free. Then I'm not scared of any sort of reversal and stuff. So that's because I believe there's a good chance we come here, consolidate a little, and then break it lower. So another reason why I think we may break lower is because the logical target for a bearish breakout from a descending, from an ascending channel is the lows of the channel. So there's a good chance price would take out the entire movement all the way from the lows of the channel, right? So if I believe that price is coming close to these price levels, then it's logical to go short here yeah, because this is my confirmation of a bearish continuation pattern, right? So I'm going to go short when the market opens. I've had all the confirmations I need. And I'm going to start with my stop loss being around this price level. I see how the market is turning out. I may adjust my stop loss to this price level following strict risk management principles, right? When price gets to this price level, so into the support level, I'm going to adjust my stop loss to entry to run the trade at the risk-free price levels just in case we do get a bullish bounce from these lows or from this area of support. The reason is because this has been a significant resistance and support in the past. That's price action for you. And then if we get a bearish continuation, then I'm just going to trail my position as we go lower. 
but my take profit is going to be around these lows over here right so around this low so i'm not going to wait for price to get to the lower bound of the symmetrical triangle because we may never get there before a bullish turnaround okay so this is how i'm going to trade crude oil for now i am not bullish on crude oil okay i won't be trading crude oil i won't be going long on crude oil until i see a significant reason to do that and when i get that reason i'm going to share my thoughts in our discord community so if you're not part of our discord it's free use the link in the description below to join that discord so another thing you could watch out for to go long for those who would like to go long on crude oil is you know taking a trend line like this so you could take this trend line take it across the highs and then you find yourself having some sort of triangle right with this price level as the base so this is a descending triangle right so this is a descending triangle with price creating lower highs and a support level so there's a good chance we get something like this so maybe price coming down here and coming up and then giving us a bullish breakout to the upside so this is something you could watch out for to go long right and if you're going to follow this principle if there's a good chance it solidifies a bearish case scenario where it touches this price levels come down touches it and break the support level because you know what a descending triangle signifies it signifies bearish momentum because we get lower highs which means the sellers are, you know, mounting pressure on the price action, right? Which gives rise to a possible bearish breakout from the support level. Sorry if I'm speaking too much grammar here. Yeah, that's just the best way I could explain or I can explain what, what I can see on the chat right now. So this is how I'm going to trade crude oil. Like I said, before I think about going long, I wouldn't rush into things, okay? So I'm most likely going to go long if we take out this area of resistance. So this is where I'm likely going to consider going long on crude oil, not even within this price level. So the only reason why I'm even considering going short right now is because, take a look at the first chart again, once more. You would notice we've had, excuse me, we've had two good rejections. One, two, in fact three. And there's a good chance we go lower all the way to this lows here before we go higher right so because of this possibility that's why i'm considering and i'm contemplating or oh, i've decided yeah i've decided to go short take probably going to be around this price level while i watch what the market does so this i'm going to trade crude oil and i'm only going to change my sentiment if we take out this area of resistance okay along with this trend line over here obviously so that's it briefly for crude oil here next we're going to be talking about nasdaq so nothing much to see here other than the fact that we had a massive bearish breakout i feel so bad i missed this trade so uh, this happened during a fundamental event uh in the us i think it was nfp or cpi one of those i can't really remember so going short here would have been a nice trade because this is a breakout from an ascending channel and that reminds me this is exactly what i was talking about right so going back to our crude oil charts just give me a minute crude oil charts on the two hours time frame exactly what i was trying to explain when we talk about price targets so if we take a look at this channel over here you see an ascending channel with a bearish breakout and a consolidation right and remember i talked about how the targets are usually the bottom of the channel you can see an evidence of that with the nasdaq trade or the nasdaq chart this is an ascending channel we had a good breakout and now the breakout ended close to the bottom of the channel at least for now <laughs> see so that's the reason why i'm also expecting price to go all the way down to these price levels before we possibly maybe see a reversal so that's just price action for you it is no indication that what happened on the nasdaq chart is going to happen on the crude oil chart but i'm just trying to show you how this price action looks are like how similar they look for you to be able to make informed trading decisions right so i hope that's something you just learned on this channel and if you're not subscribed please subscribe and leave your thoughts in the comment section down below so for nasdaq i'm going to be waiting for a proper retest into this area of value if i don't get this i wouldn't be considering going long so this is the only way i'm going to go long on nasdaq i'm going to wait for a proper retest of this area of value followed by a good bounce just like i discussed last week on gold so if we do get that um, excuse me if we do get this retest for example and a 
bullish reversal. Then my entry is going to be at the breakout from the reversal. Stop loss is going to be below the consolidation retest. And first take profit is going to be around this high. So this is how I'm going to trade crude oil. Yeah. Sorry, I'm going to trade Nasdaq, excuse me. Other than this, there's nothing else to pay attention to on this chart, okay? There's a good chance we also take out this area of value. And if we break below, I'm just going to stay away from this chart because it's going to feel like you're catching a falling knife, right? So remember, whenever you get in on the trade, you run 100 pips profit. If you're looking to make more pips, always adjust your stop loss to your entry in order to safeguard the trade and run your trade risk-free, okay? That's something you ought to be doing. So don't just get to, get to a trade. You're running 80 to 100 pips. You just let the trade be, right? So learn to safeguard and secure your trades if you intend to hold them for longer, right? So this is one bullish case scenario. So another bullish case scenario for um, NASDAQ, mind you, we are in a strong bullish trend. So that's why I'm bullish, okay? So you can see this higher highs, higher lows, all the way dating back to more than a year ago. So I don't see any reason why you want to short this chart right now. So there's only one way I would have shorted, right? I would have gone short, which was breaking this you know, um, ascending channel because I know there's an awful room for price to fall all the way to this significant area of value. And the reason, another reason is because we've had price stay in the overbought level for a few weeks, right? So that's the reason why I would have gone short at the break of this channel. So now that we are done with that, I don't see any reason I want to go short. So I know some traders will probably do this, wait for a consolidation over here and a bearish breakout to go short. But this is just too risky in my opinion and there's no guarantee that price will come close to this other area of value before we go higher, right? So that's why I'm going to be bullish. For any bullish case scenario I get, I'm going to try and as much as possible to take advantage of those price actions. So another bullish case scenario could be something like this. So we could get price coming down here, consolidating and then giving us a bullish breakout. So this would mean creating some sort of triangle, right? It could be a descending triangle with a bullish breakout of sorts. So something like this could also be another confirmation to go long on Nasdaq. And this goes in line with the overall trend, which has been bullish for more than a year now. So that's it briefly for Nasdaq. I don't think there's any other thing to see here. If you have a different opinion on this chart, please leave your thoughts in the comment section down below or join our Discord to leave your thoughts and questions so professionals could assist you and support you with your trade activities during the week. So moving on, we're going to be talking about GBBUSD, another chart we discussed last week. And in anticipation of the bullish breakout from this area of resistance, we just got that. And it looks really good, I'm not going to lie. You know, like I said last week, I wouldn't be trading currency pairs right now. If not, I would have been in this trade right now. but. I'm not on this uh, GBUSD trade because I've told myself I'm not going to be trading currency pairs for now. And when I change my mind, I'm going to let you know, right? So this GBUSD, bullish breaker from resistance level as anticipated from a weekly analysis last week. And going down to the 4 hours time frame, where before we go down, you can see we are clearly heading towards this area of resistance, which is our first take profit target, as you can see with the lines marked on the charts. So going down to the lower time frame, so four hours time frame, for example, oh, sorry, that was a five hours. So four hours time frame, for example, what are we going to be watching out for to go long? So for those who aren't in already, now price seem to be in the overbought level. Like I said earlier on last week, price can stay in the overbought level for weeks, even months without even, you know, give you an opportunity for a good entry, right? So take this with a grain of salt. I'm expecting price to reverse, right? So some sort of reversal to the downside, probably a retest, followed by a move to the upside. So this is the only reason, the only scenario why you should be considering going long. So you go long after the bounce of the retest, you set your stop loss around or below the consolidation, uh, sorry, below the retest level, and your first take profit target is around its highs while you trade the rest of positions as we go higher. So this is just one case scenario. So the reason why we are waiting for a pullback, right? So just before I say that, let me show you the next bullish case scenario. 
next bullish case scenario will be waiting for some sort of bullish continuation pattern right a bullish flag followed by a bullish breakout so something like this right so it could be a bullish flag it could be a um ascending triangle a symmetrical triangle as fast we do get a bullish breakout at the end which will signify a continuation of this initial bullish move so this will be another opportunity to go long so this may take one hour to form it may take a day it may take, it may take two days the point is you, sh you have to be patient to get these patterns as confirmations before going long so entry could be at the breakout over here stop loss will be underneath the consolidation that leads to the breakout take profit target first one of course obviously it's going to be around size so while you trade the rest of the positions as we go higher so the reason why we wait for these confirmations or we wait for these anticipations is because imagine trying to get into a trade right now because you know for a fact that this has been a very solid bullish breakout so imagine jumping to a trade here where are you going to set your stop loss so the logical price level to set your stop loss right now based on the current price action would be around these lows alternatively if you want to trade risk-free the next possible price level to set your stop loss will be around these lows this is just outrageous in my opinion right imagine going long here yeah? i know for gbp usd area usd the price uh, the pips are not as you know um significant the pip movements are, are not as significant as you have it on nasdaq gold or crude oil right but having a 200 pip stop loss on gb usd seems like a lot to me right because i won't be taking this with a 0.1 lot size at least a minimum of maybe one lot or 0.5 lots so having 200 pip stop loss when there's a good chance price may actually uh, come all the way down to this price level so 400 pip stop loss is just not the way to go in my opinion so if you wait for a retest for example and a bounce right and you go long after the bounce so you're probably going to go long over here right your stop loss is going to be underneath the retest because you already have your confirmation that we're going higher so if you measure this your stop loss is going to be just around 100 pips which seems like a fail d to me right so if you do this then you you know give yourself an opportunity to get into the trade um with a low amount of risk compared to jumping on the trade right now with 200 pips you know uh stop loss another reason why waiting for confirmations like this is important is because you tend to wait mm, a little while for your trades to play out right because the reversal the waiting the pause might have already played out before you get get into those trade so imagine getting into a trade over here so getting into a trade over here and having to wait for price to reverse all the way down which may take a few days then consolidate before coming back to your entry and actually making profit so this wait time can get frustrating which may make you want to close your trade too early or too late right but waiting to you know get to a trade over here after the retest for example this could mean price retest which means all the frustration might have ended and you just get to get to your trade and see price going all the way up so that's another reason we wait for confirmations before getting to our trade so that's it briefly for gbusd i don't see any reason why you want to be going short over here so the only way or the only reason you should be going short is if we probably get into this area of resistance and you want to trade a quick bounce so you could trade a quick bounce off of this price level but it's too risky but there again it's not a bad thing to do because you tend to get tighter stop loss of maybe 10 pips or 20 pips as the case may be for those who like to gamble but i don't recommend it i don't do that i street i uh, strictly stick with my trading strategy which is waiting for confirmations before getting into any trade so that's it briefly for gbusd sorry i took a bit of a time explaining this chart on gbusd so lastly we're going to be talking about aero usd so similar to what we discussed last week the only difference is we finally had a breakout or oh, have we <laughs> so looking at the chart right now we have a symmetrical triangle we have price over here one reversal two and three we have a good area of resistance level so mind you this is a daily time frame and we can see price closing above the resistance level so i'm going to show you something really interesting about this chart so let me know in the comment section down below do you think you're going to go long 
following this chart you can see on the screen right now on area usd or you're going to be patient enough before you you know get to this trade so what do you think let me know in the comment section down below on aero usd okay so here's what i think if you're gonna you know leave your trend line like this then you have a good case to go long because it's clearly broken the trend line and clearly closed above this area of resistance but what if we adjust our stop loss to go through the highs properly then you will notice that we are just trading around the resistance level and there's a good chance we actually get into this trend line and reverse right before maybe probably breaking so this is something you want to avoid so that's why it's good to get your line straight so if you are confused sometimes you can get confused as to where to pick your lines because i know even in my course i talked about you know uh, uh taking your lines across the highest number of touches and that will mean taking your line over here over here and over here and which means bullish breakout this could be a good signal for a good long position and you will probably make a ton of profit but if you still feel not convinced about how the price is acting or about your trend line then it's best to stick with the highs for more accuracy right and if you do that in this case you can see there's still enough room for aero usd to probably go higher touch the trend line and even maybe possibly drop before maybe taking out the trend line right so this would mean you getting a trade out taking out your stop loss before the price actually plays out another way to clean up the chart really nicely before you you know make your decision is using the line chart i know we make use of the candlestick chart so often that we forget the line chart so the line chart is a very good chart that can help you get rid of some of the noise you can see on the chart so if you use the line chart then you could get a more streamlined price level right so which means you could use this price level as a case study for your trade so which means even using the you know uh, line chart it shows that there's a good chance we hit this price level and reverse to the downside taking out your stop loss so this is something you need to think about properly before going long on aero usd so moving back to our candlestick charts which <laughs> is what everybody care about really so if you do that you can see that there's a good chance we hit this trend line and then reverse so which is what i would be watching out for for those trading um aero usd like i said i wouldn't have been trading currency pairs for now I'm just gonna watch see how it evolves over the over the next few months or weeks before i decide to get back with currency pairs so for now i'm sticking with gold crude oil and nasdaq that's all i trade for now so we're going out to the lower time frame so um let's see two hours time frame for example you can see that we are trading above this area of resistance but would you go long now my answer to that question is i wouldn't go long now so I'm going to wait for a proper break or test of this trend line, a good consolidation, followed by a breakout. So if this happens, then this can be your confirmation to go long. Mind you, we are adjusting our trend line to go to the top, right, for more accuracy. So we are going to review this uh, more as the trade evolves, as the price action evolves. And I'm going to share my thoughts in our Discord community. But this is what I'll be watching out for to go long on Aero USD right so even if you are going long right now so let's say for example you decide to go long on areas right now so you're going to go long over here right stop loss is likely going to be underneath this lows and your take profit target is going to be around this price level first then next take profit target is going to be around this price level so that's how i'm going to trade every usd if you're going to go into a trade right now but I wouldn't advise you take this route because it's just too risky and there's a good chance we simply come all the way to this price level and reverse before going higher. So that's it briefly for this week's analysis. If you love the content, please like, subscribe and leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you're interested in learning trade for us like a professional, check out our complete forest training course on Udemy. I have the link also attached in the description below. And let me know what you think about this chat um, using the comment section. And that's it for me, guys. See you next week.